Good morning and welcome to the spiritual worship experience of the Agawam Congregational Church in Agawam, Massachusetts on this second Sunday of Easter. I am Deacon Warren Tapley. Preaching today is Reverend Tom Howells, our interim minister and pastor. Janet Brown is our director of family ministries and a member in discernment in the Hamden Association of the United Church of Christ. Ann Tapley is our accompanist. Because of the restrictions on gathering in groups, we are still not able to be together as a congregation. Though this can be frustrating, it does not overcome us as we are together in the body of Christ as a faith community. We want to share this moment with you as we hold one another and our neighbor near and far in prayer in these challenging times. Let us share now a moment of worship and prepare our hearts together as we sing the uplifting hymn of Easter, Christ Arose. <laughs> to take refuge in the Lord than to, to put, put confidence, confidence in mortals. Let those who are wise give heed and, and consider, consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Now may we join in the gathering prayer and the Lord's prayer. God of mercy and power, love and holiness, we ask that you will reach down and meet our needs. We need physical healing. Grant us strength. We need spiritual healing. Grant us pardon. We are confused. Grant us guidance. We are depressed. Grant us encouragement. 
In Jesus' name, we pray together, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end results of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Listen. Please join me as we gather our hearts in prayer with the prayers of the people. Each time I pause, you may respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you the second Sunday of Easter, thankful that our hope is in you. Remind us that the signs of Jesus' resurrection are all around us. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember this day our friends who suffer from illness and loss. Help us to be a comfort for them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who are lost or alone, alienated from friends and family, Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are in situations of danger and strife, we pray that your peace and endurance will be with them. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our community, our nation, Lord, we ask that you give the leaders compassion and wisdom, remembering that their lives rest in your care. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For ourselves, we ask for the extra measure of faith, so that as we face fear and doubt, we may continue in confidence, trusting in you, and emerge as strong witnesses to your love. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Eternal God, who holds in your hands the destiny of every living thing, we worship you. Thanks be to you for the note of victory that fills our souls today. Thanks be to you for our living Lord, over whom death has no dominion. For the rich heritage of faith that life is ever Lord of death, we give you thanks. Strengthen our believing, confirm our confidence in you and life eternal. We thank you for all things that make faith in immortality more sure. For our friends who have loved us, our homes that have nourished us, for the heights and depths of the human spirit, full of promise, for all victories of right over wrong, and above all for Christ, who has brought life and immortality to light, we give you thanks. We pray for those defeated souls to whom the note of victory sounds distant and unreal. You see them, Lord, spirits frustrated by circumstance overwhelmed by temptations, facing griefs too heavy for their unaided strength. Replenish with new hope all who are discouraged about the world, who find faith in the ultimate victory of righteousness difficult. So often might triumphs over right, 
the good is undone by evil. O God, speak to us and refresh our souls with a new hope. Lift our vision above the immediate. Say to us this Easter season that no Calvary can finally defeat Christ. May Easter not represent to us only an historic victory, but may it mean a present triumph in our souls. The living Christ, our inspiration and our strength. In that sustaining faith, may we too, like our Master, overcome the world. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Our Gospel reading today is John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. With that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. He said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. What do you expect of your faith? Our lives are affected by our anticipation of the future. Right now, hopes are a little cloudy. The medical pandemic is infecting our personal lives and the economic health of families in the nation. The economy, education, health, along with other aspects of our lives are nebulous. All are questionable at the moment. Well, we say, there's always the church. But even here we find that though some of the mega churches are doing well and there are new churches springing up. Mainline churches, including the Roman Catholic Church, have attendance down. Some churches are even closing. And into the midst of all this darkness comes the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We celebrated that last Sunday. His victory over death is to bring us hope of eternal life. And more than that, it is to be a living hope in this world. The Apostle Peter, who had been ready to fight for Christ when he was arrested, 
denied that he even knew him during Christ's trial. He cowered with the rest of the disciples after Christ's crucifixion. He weakly affirmed his devotion to Christ on the seashore after his resurrection, committing himself to friendship with Christ, but not sacrificial love. Then he came to know God's grace and he writes to the dispersed tribes in a call to obedience to Christ in order that they might know more and more of God's grace and peace. And so he begins his letter reminding them and us that because of God's mercy, we have been born again. Yes, it is a biblical term and reality. To be a Christian means to be born again spiritually. The new life within is to result in hope. Peter says it is a living hope because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message, he says it this way. What a great God we have, and how fortunate we are to have him. We have been given a brand new life and have everything to live for. Do you feel that way? Confident living in the face of the difficulties of life. You know, we are to be a joyful people. Our reading this morning says, in this you greatly rejoice. But what about the difficulties and the disappointments and the threats and fears and securities? I like J.B. Phillips' translation of, this, of the answer to this. He says, this means tremendous joy to you. I know even though at present you are temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials and temptations. Temporarily harassed. We understand the harassment part. But what we need to grasp is the temporarily part. Our faith is to result in confidence and joy in the midst of trials. It seems that this harassment that we are facing has a purpose. The purpose is to prove our faith. Phillips goes on in his translation to say that this is no accident. It happens in order to prove your faith. Unless faith is tested, one never knows if it's genuine. To say I believe carries very little weight. Maintaining trust or confidence in God when things aren't going our way is the living hope. Now, you don't hope for what you already have. Hope is looking toward the future, toward the goal. And what is the goal of your faith? Peter says, the goal of your faith is the salvation of your souls. And in order to clarify that, he says, you are receiving the goal of your faith. You are receiving the goal of your faith. That is in the present tense, not the future. Our faith in Christ, whom we do not see, gives us a new life that is oriented toward God, not self, and fills us with inexpressible and glorious joy. There's a chorus we used to sing says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
I won't sing it for you. I'll give you that blessing. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Faith, joy, strength are all expressions of salvation. Without faith, the process cannot begin in you. Faith in Christ's death and resurrection for our salvation is the beginning. The ongoing result is the goal of our faith. Will there be doubts along the way? Probably. The post-resurrection experience of the Apostle Thomas in our Gospel today in the upper room shows doubt as possible even in those closest to Christ who had actually seen him. Now, doubt is not disbelief. It is the question that seeks an answer. Thomas's doubt issued into belief when he was given an answer. Jesus said to Thomas, and maybe to you, stop doubting and believe. John ends that chapter by indicating the purpose of the written gospel. He says, It is that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This new life is the goal of our faith. Eternal life, but it begins today. And it issues in joy and hope. May this be our experience. Please join us in our common commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Be alert to the presence of Christ. And the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Please join us now in our closing hymn, Go Now in Peace. <laughs>